Hello, and this is a, another training video for Art and Cultures at the ROM using TMS. This one is about getting objects online. And so to find objects you want to put online, there you have to go to the object uh, module, of course. So you will search for things. I like to have advanced queries that I've already set up. So let's look at one of those. This is uh, my main get on things online query, which is right at the top. And so you can see this is uh, got quite a number of fields on it. From department in object cataloging, I have that's from Far Eastern. From object media, I have the file name equal to .jpg. So I want everything with a JPEG. If you wanted everything with a ROM image, you would want to put in here file name ROM. Uh, asterisk within the parentheses. You, in, if you wanted ROM images, you probably also want within the object media field group to find out that it's actually uh, uh, supposed to be public. Or public. Uh, published to eMuseum is from the eMuseum field group because you'll want one that says no. File size, I have 100 kil kilobytes, uh, which is uh, barely good enough to go online. Um, so you certainly don't want anything less than that. And so I also have looking from attributes for Japan in the primary collection group. So this will give me everything uh, with the Japan primary collection group. Uh, I could change this to West Asian and this to Islamic world, whatever, to find the objects. So to execute that will give me those objects. Um, that worked really quickly because I've already done it once today, I guess. Um, from here, I will go and look at the light box. So what I'm looking for are nice pictures that could go online that aren't in other ways problematic that I can see from here. For instance, I can see this is problematic because this is point B. You can see the number here. It's a rather nice pot. A nice picture but it's point B so this is actually the lid and point A which is the actual teapot is probably already online this one doesn't look bad um, go to look at that you can see it doesn't have a date okay and I have no other sources of information and I'm not an expert on this sort of thing so it's not going to go online so go back to the light box and so I would go through this collection through this query until I find things I can put online okay Oops, that's okay look pretty good actually so but to find a specific object so if we go back to the main menu again so the, this object number is one that I could put online. Okay, I've actually cheated a bit because this one is, is already online. Um, here it is, online. But uh, I've changed a bit. I've taken away the published to a museum. But basically I want to use this to show you uh, which fields you need to fill in to put things online. So of course at the top of the screen is the data view and this is what you will see online. So if this is OK, you're OK. So the basic minimum fields you will want to have to go online will be the top bit, which is the name of the object, the title, or the object name. Either one of these will go online. Um, you will want an artist, if there is one, or maker. So this one says here, Maker Display, cover design by D.R. Bosley, printed in, by New Bharat Printing Press. Um, I actually just messed with this because what you really want to do is try to use the constituents. So you can see here the, the constituents are already filled in. So I don't need to do anything to them except make sure there's nothing in Maker Display. So that means this will now go to the constituents. We 
You see, an important aspect of this, as you can see, it's the cover design by D.R. Bosley. And so, and here it's printed by New Barat Printed Printing Press. And these things come from a prefix. So you have a prefix here or a suffix if it's something else that comes after the name. But you want to have the name clean. The actual record is just D.R. Bosley. But anything that comes before the name, you put in the uh, prefix. Anything that comes after the name that's only related to this object, uh, you uh, put it he here, suffix and prefix, and you'll be able to see it in the display preview. So the same with printed by as a prefix. So there's only one record for New Barat Press, you see up here. But in this relationship to that object, it was printed by it. Okay, so that's the maker. Okay, since I've gone back to it, you see it's now changed to what would appear online with the artist and the manufacturer coming from the record. Okay, so after that, we have the geography, Mumbai, India. And this comes from the geography display in this case. So this will go online. If there is nothing here in geography display, it will display the origin here. And I'll show you one of those in a minute. After that, color offset lithograph print. So this is the uh, material and technique display field. Uh, behind the, the scenes is actually called the medium field because TMS was originally an art history uh, biased software, but uh, we call it material and technique display. So this will appear here. Uh, material and technique do not display. You want to put something here. So this is period. Here it says period. This will also display. In this case, uh, the cataloger has decided who's Dipali here, does not want period um, because period doesn't matter. But if you want period, say it's like Neolithic or something and that matters to you, you put it in here. But it's not one of those essential fields. Date, however, is an essential field. You will want to put a date on the object and if it's a very broad date, then you put a very broad date, but you have to make sure there's a date. Another thing you'll want to do about the date is press this button and make sure the begin ISO date and the end ISO date are also filled in because that makes it easier to search for the objects. So you can see in that case it was. So then Below there we have dimensions. Dimensions are down here. And so you can see it's nice to have dimensions of something you have no scale for. Below that on here is the uh, credit line, which of course is a registration field, so you can't edit it. It's all the way down here. I just didn't keep going down. There we go, credit line's down here. But as I say, that comes from registration data. So, what else will you want to do? Uh, you will want to change classification, or, or not in this case, because that's what it is. Uh, something you might want to do is add one. You see that little plus sign there? Um, for instance, this might be a two-dimensional visual work. You might want to add that, or, or not. Oh, although probably it is. Another interesting thing to be very aware of when you're putting things online is a status flag. So certain things um, with this red text in it, you really should not be putting online. Um, if it says restricted in any way, you need to find out why it's restricted and not just go putting it uh, online. Um, registrar object restrictions will mean there's probably issues with copyright. And so you need to get explicit permission from registration in order to put this online, 
which we have, so it's good to go. Um, other things you want to look at will be down here, the images. Is there an image with public access? So this is a, a ROM image, which tend to come with public access. And both of these look very nice. Although they're exactly the same image. Oh no, that's the back. Um, so that's good to go. There is one further field. No, oh, two further fields that will show up. One is public caption. So this will appear. And also down here, a field we've added, which here is called historical attributions, which is uh, a field that was in TMS. Uh, and we were looking for a field to write provenance information. And there is a provenance field, which is actually on here, but this is a registration field. And registration wanted to keep provenance a registration field and keep it hidden so they can write provenance information that they don't want to be made public. We also have an object history field, but that we've had for many years and is often filled with complete rubbish. So we made historical attributions available for putting provenance and object history information that you want to make publicly available. And you know, we're often asked, where does this come from? What is the provenance of this thing? So if you're ever doing that sort of research, this is a good place to put it and it will appear online and stop people having to ask that sort of thing. So I think that's largely everything. So I'm going to say publish to eMuseum. And so then tomorrow it will appear. Since I've already messed around with this one, it is already here online. So here's a couple of things to, to look at. So this is the title. Um, because we're using the uh, constituents, this is now a hot link. And so this will find everything related to that individual. So it's got this one and that one, which is quite useful if it's a prolific artist. Uh, so if we go back to this one, so all of the information you put in will now be here, including the object number. It says not on view. I'll just go back and do that. Not on view is because this has been clicked. Description is the unfortunate term at the moment. Being actually asked, asking to have this changed since we went online some time ago, is actually the public caption. Um, We can go away. We've asked a number of times if this could be changed so that you have like the first line or something that the British Museum has or something like that. Below that we have the cataloger. Um, we also will have fill collector show up here. Uh, the cataloger is also a hot link so it will enable you to find all of the objects um, linked to that individual. It's in the South Asia collection. So this is a collection group. It could be the primary collection group or just the collection group. This is just in South Asia. And so this will give you everything from South Asia. And it's in the department presently called World Cultures Far Eastern. Um, this is what it's called in TMS until we agree on the final changes. That's what will remain. And so this will give you everything from that department which is quite a lot. And of course, if um, anybody has a comment, they will click this and this will set up an email, which will go to me and I will be forwarding it to you if there's any problems with this. So let's look at another record. This is an object in the Greek and Roman section. It's from an Anglo-Saxon site in Sussex. And what's interesting about this, so let's let's find this in the database. Control F gives me find it. Put that in there and go. So this has a, a number of things which are unusual. 
one of which it has no title. See, there's no title here. You can see my cursor moving around. It has an object name. Um, and that's what shows up here and here. You'll notice since I'm, in this is a big cursor because I'm not actually in TMS, which doesn't allow me to have a big cursor. So that comes from sword blade, not object titles. Also, excavated at an origin does not come from geography display. It comes from the geography assistant. And so we have the origin and excavated at. So if we edit one of those, this will take a while because of the flex fields. You see, this is a geography type. And so you can have a number of geography types. Place depicted is, say, it's a photograph of a temple somewhere, then you place, and you know what temple it is, you can say where it is. Use is where it was used. Origin is where it was made. I don't know what location is. I don't know who added that. Excavated that we added. Place collected was originally a natural history field, but we're using a lot too for things that we know where they were collected. This is an excavated at, so this is an excavation. It'll have latitude and longitude, and so it will be a very precise location on the map. So this then displays like this, excavated at an origin. Uh, I added that the sword was made somewhere in Western Europe. It almost certain was not made at Olfriston, which is a very small village. And uh, so it's probably made somewhere in Western Europe, possibly on the continent. And I really added it just so it had something else here, just to show how it works. Another thing this has, it also has a description, but it also has what is put here as object history. And this is the contents of this field down here, the historical attributions. So this is because I did get a query from a museum at Lewis in Sussex saying, what on earth are you doing with our stuff? So I researched it, and apparently the person that owned the land donated it to the ROM, and it was fully his right to do so. Um, and so that's why we have this object excavated in Sussex. And so I wrote all this down, put it in this field, and so now it's a matter of public record. Uh, this is something we would like to have work something like this so that you don't have all this text. It would be nice if it was a, oh, click this and you get object history. But uh, that's something we're still working on. Okay, so I think that's everything for now. Thank you.